a dream had come true. The Queensland Youth Orchestra, under conductor John Currow, had performed at the 1972 International Festival of Youth Orchestras. This festival, now in its seventh year, was held at Lausanne in Switzerland. Best able to describe this festival are the organisers, musical director Blythe Major and chairman Lionel Breyer, who tell of the origin of the festival. Well, it started um, very casually in England. Blythe Major, how am I right, is the founder and conductor of the Midland Youth Orchestra of Great Britain. And he wanted to organise a tour, um, taking his young players to Switzerland. And I helped him organise this, and we went to Zermatt, which is really a ski town, but we went there in the summer. And they, the young uh, musicians there rehearsed, gave a series of concerts. And it was so successful. The glorious scenery, the, um, all the various things that the young people could do apart from music, plus the concerts and the success of the concert was so successful that discussing it one day, we looked at each other and thought, couldn't we extend this whole idea um, by bringing youth orchestras from all over the world together and having a large festival and using Switzerland and the, the Alps and the mountains as the place of venue. We discussed this uh, not only in Switzerland, but also when we returned to England, and we decided this was a good idea, and we immediately began to seek around the world for youth orchestras who might be attracted to the idea, and uh, very shortly we found ourselves with uh, a large number of orchestras who would come to such a festival, and that was the origin of the festival. Secretary General Joy Breyer tells how Queensland became yes. involved. Uh, Blythe Major heard a tape of their music, and the other uh, thing that's, I think, uh, very important to say is that all the young people who come to our festival have to find finance themselves to come to the festival and for their stay here in Switzerland. I think that the uh, Queensland Youth Orchestra in the beginning were rather worried about raising hundreds and thousands of dollars to come halfway across the world to Lausanne. Alitalia Airways wish to announce the departure of... Lausanne. None of us will ever forget our feelings on the afternoon we left Brisbane. For months, our whole life had been youth orchestra. Now, all our efforts and the efforts of our parents and friends were over. We were on our way to Switzerland. It would have been easier if they'd only been ourselves to worry about, but instead there were the instruments, over a hundred of them weighing more than a ton. Some of our packing cases didn't survive the trip. One didn't even leave Brisbane, as it was too big for the aircraft. But the delay only added to our excitement. Few of us had been on an international flight before. I guess more than once in the last six months, most of us had felt we wouldn't really make it. But here we were, after months of rehearsals, concerts and fundraising efforts. We'd raised over $90,000 enough to take us all to Switzerland and Italy. It's the first festival we've ever had all the five continents represented, and I was particularly pleased to see that Queensland had achieved this major undertaking because all the young people I know were involved in this fundraising, and each and every young person baked cookies or washed cars and um, raised this fantastic sum to get here. So that when I saw them get off the plane, I was particularly gratified to see them all and to feel that after nine months they had achieved their target. Lausanne, the festival city. A city which combines art and culture, the traditional and the modern we immediately fell in love with the quaint old world houses, the clean streets and the beautiful buildings. Lausanne's wish to encourage young people to come and visit them takes many forms. One is to play host for two weeks every summer 
to young people taking part in the International Festival of Youth Orchestras. Here, we were to join over 1,000 young people from 10 countries. We were lucky. Our accommodation was near the Palais. Like most of the other groups, we stayed in a primary school where the classrooms had been made into dormitories. The front steps of our school proved to be one of our most popular meeting places. We had our continental breakfast there with the Milwaukee group. I would say it's, it's the important aim of our festival is to bring young people together from all over the world. They have one common interest, which is music, and we want them to get to know each other, to meet each other, and perhaps to go home with a little more understanding of what young people's lives are like uh, around the rest of the world. Two days after, we travelled to Roll, a country town 30 kilometres from Lausanne, situated on the edge of Lake Geneva. Here in the grounds of this beautiful medieval castle, we gave our concert. It was really a rehearsal for the festival. We had become accustomed to travelling in the months before we left Brisbane, as we had given concerts in 11 country towns to help raise money for our trip. Special uniforms attracted favourable comment wherever we went and made us easy to identify. All the groups performed in towns and cities surrounding Lausanne during the festival. In this way, the young visitors were able to see the beauties of Switzerland and to give their friendly Swiss hosts the opportunity of hearing their music. The advertisement of our concert gave us all a laugh as we found we came from a strange place called Queensland. a tiny village. Perhaps not even a thousand people lived there. Yet the courtyard of the castle was packed during our concert. Wherever we went, we had our luggage problems. But fortunately, there were always plenty of porters. Before the concert came the rehearsal. It was only by rehearsals such as this that we were able to reach our peak for our festival performance. As the European summer evenings are long, our concerts began at 8.45 p.m. This meant that there was plenty of time for more sightseeing. We all 
fell in love with Switzerland, particularly Lausanne. Ideally situated on the shores of the largest lake in Europe, Lausanne offered many attractions to the tourist. Its great beauty often defied description. Its setting, its climate, and its varied activities have made it, over the centuries, a popular resort. It was said that for two weeks during our festival, there was music in the air in Switzerland. But we found that as well as music, there was also great beauty. The terraced vineyards at Chillon were of great interest. They had been started by the monks many centuries ago. Perhaps the best known landmark in Chillon is the ancient castle standing at the eastern end of Lake Geneva. This castle is over 700 years old and was one of the oldest buildings we visited. Lord Byron gave fame to the castle in his immortal poem, The Prisoner of Chillon. Chillon, thy prison is a holy place, and thy sad floor an altar. For t'was trod until his very steps have left a trace, worn as if thy cold pavement were a sod by Bonavard. May none those marks efface, for they appeal from tyranny to God. How do you like it? Beautiful. Any of you been before to Europe? No, no? not out of Australia. Any of the whole orchestra been before to I Europe? I think one or two only. Yeah. Yeah. That's all, huh? Yes, mm -hmm. only one or two. Yes, well, they had a wonderful time now, but just before we left, they were telling me, ah, oh, it's been so much hard work, we'd sooner stay home. <laughs> well, that's not a very Australian <laughs> attitude at all. But they were very tired. You see, they don't know that I know Australia very well because they're all too young. <laughs> Some of them were even, no, no, none of them were born when I first visited Australia, oh my which was in 46. And I've been there for several times since. But as I say, they are too young to remember that or even to know that. I've even lived in Melbourne for two years. We were thrilled to be able to talk to Maestro Walter Suskind, conductor of the specially selected so International Youth Orchestra. He gave us his opinion about competitive music festivals. Of course, I hate uh, competitions in the arts. And I always remember one of the great composers of our day, Alban Berg, whom I knew when I was a boy, and I was more or less forced by one of my teachers to participate in a piano competition in Vienna. And I visited Alban Berg, and he said, you are not taking part in the circus, are you? And I was so humiliated that I had to admit I was. And then that was the one and only competition I ever uh, took part in. And so that sort of was very much in my mind, you know, that we do not want to, and so, so did the others, of course, we do not want to make a sort of uh, three-ring circus out of it. You know, we are number one, we are number two orchestra. That's not the point at all. This non-competitive spirit is shown in the composite orchestra which rehearsed under Janus Zandor. Do you know where we begin? Allegro e Vace. All the people who has the last notes to play, they have not to play. It begins only with the trumpet. All right? Only with the trumpets. Please.
August 1st was Swiss National Day, and Lausanne became a festive city, as flags appeared on many buildings and even on the bridges. These changed the character of the city so much that it looked like a carpet of flags. We'd never suspected that the casual, friendly Swiss were so nationalistic and proud of their country. The holiday mood of the people was reflected in the large audience who listened to the performance of the 1812 Overture given by the combined orchestra in the open air on the shore of Lake Geneva. 380 of the young musicians joined together to form this orchestra, one of the largest you would ever see. Unfortunately, no Queenslanders were able to take part as our concert followed shortly afterwards. It was indicative of the feelings of the festival that so many took part, even though some of them had not been originally selected. Everyone was expected to join in everything, and when they did, they were welcomed with open arms. Sharing experiences and ideas with people of other countries showed that language rarely presented a barrier to friendship. That's right, yeah, 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 sort of. Stay and be friends? Yes? Oh, yes, yeah. How, how, how about their music chord? Oh, the Japanese music, you know, it was a little, a oh. little difficult. To understand. understand. We couldn't understand but, it. Uh, Classical. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was very good. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it was.
Each night after the performance, we all had a chance to get together at the festival disco held next door to the concert hall. But it wasn't all play. You, you give, you start. First compromise, you go up and you go down a little bit. Fine, fine, excellent, excellent. So we take it then from, um, from after the, the, the GP bar, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eighth bar, please, the eighth bar, the eighth bar, bar eight. As our festival performance drew nearer, our rehearsals took on a new meaning. Together, together, come on, together. Together. Lots of vibrato on the pizzicatos, lots of vibrato on the pizzicatos, lots of it. Vibrato, vibrato, always, especially on the accompaniments, always. I think it's a, it's a sort of entente which I cannot offhand think of a parallel for uh, as far as the opportunity is concerned for young people to get together, make music together as they do in the final concert where we have each nationality represented so that uh, it's about the most international orchestra that, uh, of any and that they can talk to each other and that they find that People are people, wherever they come from, that they find that love of music is something that binds people together, something that works for the beautiful and good things of life. I think they gain immeasurably. I really think that. In fact, there were so many individual and group cases where one could practically feel it with one's fingers, the difference between the rather naive outlook they may have taken at the beginning of the festival about people, musicians from other countries, and how enlightened they became through the contact with musicians of other countries, be it young musicians or their teachers or their conductors. And of course, I mean, music is part of life, certainly part of their life, an important part, but it's not all of life. So they get enlightened not only about the musical habits, of other countries and other peoples, but also about their way of life, about their outlooks, about their politics for that matter. Queensland had representatives in the International Festival Youth Orchestra. We were delighted when one of them, our horn player Rebecca Rasmus, was awarded the Roslyn and Jack Lyons Scholarship to study with Barry Tuckwell in London. On the Saturday night of our concert, our patron, Doug Watkins, joined us to share our big moment. Everyone had been very kind to us. The festival organisers, hearing of our protests about continental breakfasts, had even arranged for us to have a strine breakfast, steak and eggs at a local restaurant, so we would be in good shape for the performance.